What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And today you get your first look at the new background of the new place. It's a little it's a little echoey in this area. Probably going to end up moving it to either um, in this area in the living room by the couch or in my bedroom. Because, you know, it will be less echoey and uh, probably a better background for you guys to look at than just a blank wall in our pantry. But we got the Jags gear on, so you already know what that means. We're going to be talking about my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, it's been a minute since we've sat down. We've discussed the Jags. I think it's almost been a month, close to three weeks to a month since uh, the last Jags video we made. And we talked about five things the Jags need to do to have a successful offseason. Now, the since that video dropped, uh, Yannick Ngakwe announced he does not want to sign back with the Jaguars. And that was kind of something we all figured. The Jags have announced that they're trying to ship Nick Foles. And it's really just been a huge mess of an offseason. And this is not something we need because this season is win or bust for the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars cannot afford another five-win season, uh, at least with this front office, with guys like Shad Khan, Dave Caldwell, Doug Marone as the head coach. They've brought in some guys like Jay Gruden in, or, in order to make that winning a little bit more seamless and a little bit easier, but it's an uphill battle from here, ladies and gentlemen, and this season is win or bust. A lot of people want to say that this season is just going to be another garbage season uh, where the Jags have no shot at winning, and, you know, I would agree with you. I would usually agree with you on that kind of thing. But as far as this season goes, it is win or go home, and we're going to talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why this season for the Jacksonville Jaguars is win or go home. So first and foremost, let's get this out of the way first. The Jacksonville Jaguars, without a doubt, and they always have been, and <laughs> for the foreseeable future probably always will be, a dumpster fire. That's just the way she goes. The Jaguars right now are in shambles. However, there are some positive takeaways to be taken away from this team, and hopefully some things that they do in the offseason will improve that morale a little bit. But what I mean by win now, what does this mean by this season is win now or bust? Well, let me tell you. The Jaguars are currently in the AFC South. The AFC South right now, without a doubt, even though last season the Texans and the Titans did you know, manage to go pretty far in the playoffs, this is not a great division. Ryan Tannehill is not a quarterback that should be dominant in this division. Deshaun Watson is a good quarterback, but the Houston Texans as a whole are an overrated football team. The Jaguars are in a division that they should win with the talent they have. Now the Jags are going to franchise tag Yannick Ngakwe. What does that mean? Yannick Ngakwe will not play with the franchise tag. He won't play. It's simple as that. The Jags are going to have to trade him. The Jags are going to have to try and trade him to get value out of him. And ideally what the Jags need to do with Yannick Ngakwe is pair him with Nick Foles. Because you got to pair him with Nick Foles in order to get Nick Foles out of there. And you need to do it to get high value out of Yannick Ngakwe and still get something out of Nick Foles. Maybe get a first round pick out of Yannick Ngakwe and Nick Foles and maybe like a fourth round pick to get a first round pick out of a team that you know needs an edge rusher and maybe needs a quarterback to bring in some quarterback competition. Teams like maybe Tampa Bay, teams like Chicago. Like you need Chicago doesn't really need an edge rusher as of, you know, obviously they have Cleo Mack. But, you know, somebody that needs maybe a backup quarterback, because no one's going to just take Nick Foles for a seventh-round pick. No one's going to try and make that trade, especially with the, how much guaranteed money he has in his contract. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work like that. And it's unfortunate, but that's just the way she goes at this point. The Jags need to do that. They need to do that. Because they need as many opportunities to win as they get. And the Jags are putting themselves in an absolute terrible situation to be in this win-now mode. Am I saying that this is the best case scenario for the Jags to be in a win-now mode? Absolutely not, but that's just the fact of the matter. You can't keep these people around that are trying to develop your franchise, build your franchise, if they can't do anything with it. 2017 was a pipe dream. Everybody wants to go back to that and say, oh, 2017, man, that was that year, bro. We were so close. Do you know how many players are still left from that 2017 team? Not a lot. You know, the whole secondary is gone. 
Malik Jackson's gone. Marcel Darius is going to be gone. I mean, you got Calais Campbell, Miles Jack on defense, and that's just off the top. Avery Jones is still there. And, you know, you got some guys on the offensive line. You don't have the same quarterback. You have Leonard Fournette. This is not the same team. The Jaguars managed to put together six wins with a team that was basically in shambles last year. And they managed to kind of still be in the thick of things as far as, you know, the playoff hunt goes. But this year is going to be even more difficult because you got two games in London. You're going to be losing some key players. Hopefully guys like Calais Campbell will restructure because this is a guy you need on your team. Calais Campbell is a must-have on the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't care. But there's just going to have to be some finessing with some players. There's going to have to be things you got to adjust and account for in order to make sure that this is going to be a winning football team. Now that kind of goes back to the idea of franchise tagging Anakin Gokwe. Is franchise tagging Anakin Gokwe the best case scenario? For a lot of people, yes it is. Can I see the side of the coin where it might be better to cut him and just keep that cap space? Yeah, I can see that. But it sucks that you know, you're going to have to let that talented of a player walk away and get nothing in return. But if you're going to let him walk away, you're going to save that cap space. The Jags better do something with that cap space because if we just sit around wait for like some magical free agent to just show up and fall into our laps, it's never going to happen. That's the fact of the matter, is that it's just never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Now let me say the positive side of the things, the positive side of things are, is that the Jaguars have a young rookie quarterback, well now going to be a second year quarterback, in Gardner Minshew that I think knows what he's getting himself involved in. He was kind of in the same thing with WSU. WSU was a pretty solid football team when he came in, but they were not as good as they were ever again or, you know, in the past that they were when he was their quarterback. He brought the most out of that offense, and he has a guy in Jake Rudin that can teach him some things. You know, he developed guys like Kirk Cousins to get a massive, massive contract. He developed guys like Andy Dalton when he was a playoff quarterback in his first couple of years. You know, since then he's fallen off. But Gardner Minshew is a guy that Jay Gruden can mold to be an even better version of himself, if that is believable, because Gardner Minshew has every potential in the world and every asset to be a star in the National Football League. That's where this team starts with. This team starts with how they're going to do with Gardner Minshew. This team starts with how Minshew is going to lead this team. It starts with the offense. The defense is going to struggle. You got guys like Dwan Smoot who are going to have to play you know, vital roles this year. He got six sacks last year, but he's a guy that is going to have to be huge this year. You got guys like Calais Campbell. He's going to, you know, he's getting up there in age. Last year, you know, he got six sacks, but I mean, that's not the numbers that I guess he's used to producing for the Jaguars, but he's going to have to be that leader that he is. Guys like Miles Jack, who regressed last year, had some injuries. We weren't sure what he was going to do last year. He's going to have to step up on the defensive end. But don't let any of this confuse you. Don't let any of this drama that's going on in Jacksonville confuse you from the fact that this team is making it so hard on themselves to win now. But that's what this season is. Literally, Shad Khan could not have made it harder for his football team to be in this win-now mode than what he's making this team. Literally, every problem that is inside this organization has been caused within the organization. And that's awful. And that's awful. But don't get it twisted. This is a win-now game. This is, I mean, a win-now season. This is what it is. The Jags need to win now this year. And I see a lot of people saying, no, they don't. Like, this is just going to be the same year. You know, everybody's going to go. But on paper, for this front office, for this team, it's win now. I've seen a lot of people on the internet, on Twitter especially. I'm sure somebody's going to watch this on Twitter, retweet it, and say something like, oh, Treve didn't even really say anything in this video. But trust me, it's win now. The Jags might as well just win five games next season. And, you know, we're back to where we usually are as a team, as a football team, as an organization. But you got to know that in the fans' eyes, in Shad Khan's eyes, it's win now. I don't care how hard the organization's made it, but that's what it is. And that's what this season comes down to. Buckle in, boys, because you're in for one hell of a ride 
for this 2020 season. And that was why 2020 is a win-now season for the Jacksonville Jaguars. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Treep Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Treep Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Don't forget, you can hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you can get notified every single time I drop a new video. We're starting to drop more videos more constantly on the channel, as promised. And make sure you drop a like down below and leave a comment on why you think 2020 is a win-now season for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.